Hi guys, I'm Ron and this is The Wrecking Yard. What I'm working on today is a nudge tool for my lathe that fits into the uh, Allura style tool holder. So let's get to it and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, we'll start off with uh, cutting a uh, piece of stock to length. Uh, that was a 2 by uh, 4 inch piece of extrusion. What I really needed was about an inch and a half by 3 inch piece of uh, aluminum that, uh, for this piece. Uh, so there's actually a fair bit of uh, material to remove. What I'm using to remove the material here is a uh, face mill. Now this one is not a particularly good one because it has brazed in inserts so yeah, when it finally dulls up it's probably going to require some pretty expensive sharpening to the point where I doubt it would be economical or for that matter uh, you know, just be discarded for that, for what it's worth. It's, I don't think it's really easily sharpenable because all four of the cutters on it, well, actually I think there might be six cutters on it, but nevertheless, um, need to be sharpened fairly precisely, otherwise one side would dig in more than the other, or one cutter would dig in more than the other. In any case, I had a fair bit of stock to remove. Uh, I've checked it to length, so I'm going to swap that out and put an end mill in. That's a three-quarter, in case you're curious and just uh, finish up the ends on the piece of stock. Um, for the one side, I didn't take a lot off, and the other side, I took most of it off to get it to the correct length. As I said uh, before, none of these dimensions are particularly critical. Once I'm done this, I'll take it out of the vise, mark it up, and then we'll uh, rough out the center portion so that the dovetail cutter doesn't have much material to remove. Now this is, portion right here is actually lower than the uh, dovetail cutter is cut. It's actually a relief for where the piston for the Loris tool holder will move in. Uh, basically I wanted to remove as much stock here as possible to give the dovetail cutter as much uh, or as little stock as possible to, to remove. Now one thing you'll see coming up here is when I put the dovetail cutter in it's actually cutting on both sides for the first pass which is less than ideal but uh, couldn't be helped. That dovetail cutter was the biggest one I had, but the next size smaller wouldn't have cut to the top of the uh, stock, so it would have been a bit of a pain. As you can see there, I was just doing a quick sanity check with the tool holder. Uh, once that's done, I'm going to start uh, doing some checks there with uh, dowels and a micrometer, or actually it's a dowel caliper, and, uh, and make sure that I'm not going to take too much off. This is the second one of these I made. I want to make sure I don't have to make a third one. Uh, I'm using the Alorus tool holder to, uh, to to check. It's the best way to go, you know, like uh, and and make sure that I'm not going to take too much stock off. You can see it worked there, so I'll take it out and I'll fit it into the uh, tool holder on the lathe and just verify that it works correctly. Okay, so we test fit the uh, well the work piece into the uh, tool holder. You can see it works quite well. That's the relief for the piston there, and uh, all that's left now is to drill the holes for the uh, drill and tap the holes for the bearing and for the uh, uh, retainer for the uh, tool holder. Okay, so I've put an edge finder into the uh, mill there, so I can accurately locate and drill the holes for the you know threaded bits there, the mounting hole and the bearing holes. Not much special going on there, a bit of overkill. The last uh, thing I need to do is I'm going to put a corner rounding bit into the mill and uh, you know round off the corner of the piece and then it's pretty much done. Okay so here's the nearly complete tool in the tool post on the lathe but the only other thing remaining is the uh, the knurled nut uh, that I gotta make for this thing here. So uh, we'll jump into that piece and uh, then we'll be done. Okay, so what I've got here is a 7 8 inch piece of aluminum uh, round stock. It's nothing special. Uh, but the only thing worth uh, making any special note of here is uh, when I come in here with the part off tool, I use a ruler there to make sure that it's on center height. If the ruler is basically tangent to the work or straight up and down to the work, it uh, means that it's uh, straight up and, or that the part off tool is exactly on center height for it and that's pretty critical for a part off tool otherwise they'll go and uh, dig in. Now notice I cut the head off a bolt and I use that as a mandrel for these little nuts and it isn't exactly centered. You can see a little bit of wobble there but it's good enough for uh, what I needed. 
Okay, so after a whole bunch of fast forwarded video and uh, narrated uh, comments here, there's the completed tool with the uh, just made uh, knurled uh, nut there. And uh, there it is with the bearings installed. These are roller skate bearings held in with uh, 5 16 bolts, or you could use, uh, I think it's 8 millimeters, is what it's supposed to be, but 5 16 is close enough. There we go. A little bit of sanding on it I did. Still some marking on it, but uh, hey, who cares? So you're probably wondering about what you would use this tool for. So if you haven't watched Double Boost videos, that's where I got the idea for from this. Now his tool was a um, was essentially just a bearing on the end of a uh, uh, piece of uh, round stock, and he would just mount it in one of his uh, his tools and uh, and use that to bump. And uh, I wanted to practice cutting some dovetails because I have another one of these uh, tools I want to make. And uh, so I decided to just make it this way. Now, when it's in this position, you'd have a piece of round stock in here. I don't have anything suitable to show you right this second. But a piece of round stock in here, and if it was sticking out a fair ways, you could use this one here to roll it and just gradually just bump it into a more or less straight position. Now, if you push it too far, you're going to have a big problem. But if you push it to just the right level, and you're going to be able to have to eyeball it, you'll get it more or less so that the end of it isn't wobbling. You don't have much control over what's happening here, but presumably in the chuck, it's uh, it's pretty close to being centered. And what you're doing is these should, uh, your chuck jaws shouldn't be particularly tight. Now for what I'll show you right now, is I will show you the case where it is uh, used to, in this position, which is to take a piece of round stock, thin round stock, that you're going to hold in the tips of the jaws and look for your chuck key and you're going to hold it lightly and hopefully I'm not going to get this in the face but you hold it fairly lightly so that it can move and then what you would do is close it bring the bearing up to the approximate edge of it and then bring it in with the chuck running get it running true in the chuck and you should be able to see well hopefully you can see that just that little bit of a nudge there has uh, has uh, has pushed it more or less true and you can see the bearing is pretty much turning well hopefully you can see I don't know what the resolution is like but you can see that the bearing is turning continuously so there isn't at any point where it's not uh, not uh, touching. So we'll stop that. And at that point, you take that piece of thin stock, tighten up the chuck, and uh, you'd have a pretty good uh, idea that it was running fairly true. Now, I'm not going to do anything with this, but this was just my example. It was a piece I had lying around. But that gives you some idea about what it's for. Now, what I wanted it for is I want a piece of round stock that's going to stick a fair bit out of the chuck and it may not, might not be, well, I'd like to be able to true it up because I don't want to waste any more of the stock than I have to. But in any case, that's what this tool is for. If you want to see uh, it used more, uh, Double Boost has a lot of great videos on uh, on it. Uh, you know, I can also say Mr. Pete has great videos on, <clears throat> on cutting the dovetails. Uh, this took me two tries to get that one right. And uh, what's the last guy there? That old, this old Tony has some great videos on squaring up stock. I took a lot of my tips from uh, from him on uh, on that when I was squaring this off. Although I will admit his unacceptable <laughs> value was was the best I could achieve in squaring up stock. So uh, it's, clearly, I need to watch it again. In any case, guys. That's it for this video for right now. I'm going to be doing another one of these. Uh, not this exact style, but another similar sort of an idea shortly. That's why I went and I made another knurled nut here, because I knew I was going to need another one. Uh, you could see, clearly see, if I didn't already say it, that that, uh, 
bolt that I cut off there wasn't exactly running concentrically, but for just a little bit of finishing that these needed, uh, I wasn't too worried about it. And I'm actually pretty happy with how that turned out. Uh, that was the first time I ever really successfully used the knurling tool, but then again, I always tried it on steel. This is aluminum. But nevertheless, that wasn't too bad. I think I could have probably done with a little bit larger one. Maybe I'll remake these again at some point in a 1 inch diameter. These were about 7 8 uh, in the raw form. So we'll see. Because it just barely catches the edge of the uh, Aloris tool post here. Or the Aloris clone. In any case guys, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment and subscribe. And check the description for related links and other information.